Okay, this is Ed Titus or Ed Titus 2 at the Home Theater Channel on YouTube. And this is part two to the DIY video on Home Theater. And let's get right to the video. basement into a well-tuned, awesome-sounding home theater with a huge screen. We're transforming this shell of a room into a space to get the Cineplex experience at home. Homeowner Peter Moore has always enjoyed the magic of movies, but he prefers watching in the comforts of his own home. I think the thing that intrigues us most about having a home theater is just that. It's in your home. So you're not in a big multiplex with lots of talking and popcorn munching. But it's just the ability to enjoy movies, but also enjoy them in the confines of your home. So when Peter built his brand new house, he set aside a room in his unfinished basement to create a home theater. He already bought his electronics and has a pretty good idea how he wants the room to look. Let's face it, these kind of rooms, they're a guy's cave. And it's going to be more of a feel. And knowing when I'm there, I'm home, in my comfort zone, and it's really going to be a great place. designer Mark Midya is going to help Peter create the home theater of his dreams, giving him and you a step-by-step -step guide on how to build a home theater of your own from the ground up. But before construction on the walls began, Mark had to address something built into this space. Two of the walls and the floor are concrete, which is not acoustically friendly. All the concrete is really going to be uh, tough for us in the low bass frequencies. So what we like to do is uh, get some bass absorption, maybe raise the floor, do some acoustic treatments to the floor. Um, and then on the block walls, we like to do uh, some sheetrock construction techniques and some insulation techniques to help soften those up so we can get some good absorption with, with this material in particular is very, very reflective for base frequencies. Um, have you thought about a floated floor and doing something along those lines as far as doing treatment for it? Yeah, had actually always planned that this would be some sort of a raised floor, either for cabling or for the taming of the room. With the plan for the concrete under control, a layout for the home theater must be created, and one of the first decisions is where to place the big screen. Here's a layout of our home theater so far. We'll install pocket doors in the back at the main entrance and house the electronics in a smaller room just outside those doors. There's also a smaller door in the back that leads to the garage. The big screen will take center stage at the front and will build media storage with lots of shelves in the back of the room. When building a home theater, it's important to make sure your room is the right size because room dimensions affect room resonance. Resonance can cause certain frequencies to sound too loud or too soft. You can easily minimize room resonance by building room dimensions that are not divisible of each other. Now, if a homeowner does wind up with a room that is 10 by 10 by 20, let's say, not the optimal set of dimensions, is there anything he or she can do to improve the sound of that room? Well, in a room at this stage of construction, one of the easiest things to do would be just simply to move a wall in six inches or a foot to break up those dimensions. And that will really help the bass frequencies from resonating in the room and creating maybe too boomy of a bass sound. Luckily, our dimensions work perfectly. The height of the room is 10 feet. The length of the room is 17 feet, 6 inches. And the width of the room is 15 feet, 8 inches. We won't have to build out any walls, and we don't need to raise or lower the ceiling. For more information about creating room dimensions for the best sound, or if you have any other questions about building your own home theater, visit our website at DIYNetwork.com. Now it's time to decide where to put the chairs. You know, Mark, everybody talks about where to put the speakers in the room for the best sound, but almost nobody pays attention to where to put the listening position. You know, I walk into a lot of rooms and I'll find the couch on the very back wall or a chair right in the middle of the room. And those are really the two worst seating positions in the room. What happens is the bass frequencies tend to build up at the walls and disappear in the middle. So what's a good rule of thumb for someone who wants to sit in the best sounding spot in the room? What I like to do is take the room dimensions, divide them by three, and draw the lines in the floor and find where they intersect. And those seating positions will be the best sound. 
We also have to figure out what screen size will be appropriate for this space. The standard guideline home theater designers use to determine an appropriate screen size is to make sure that the seating distance to the screen equals one and a half times the diagonal of the screen. For example, in our case, Peter will sit about 11 feet from the screen, which, divided by one and a half, gives us a screen size of 88 inches. If the calculations for your room don't match up with standard screen sizes, don't worry. Just choose the screen that's closest to your measurements. We also need to know how high the screen should be placed on the wall. For comfortable viewing, the center of the screen should be no higher than 15 degrees above the viewer, and the top of the screen should be no more than 35 degrees above the viewer. Since the average person sits 36 inches high in a home theater style chair, the center of our screen should be no higher than 5 feet 10 inches from the ground. Once you determine where to place your screen, you can figure out how far away the projector will be located. The homeowner in this case has a ceiling mount for his projector, and I do prefer that location. Mark determined that our projector should be mounted on the ceiling, 12 feet away from the screen. Coming up next, no home theater is complete without surround sound, and we'll show you the best place to put your speakers. Straight ahead on DIY's Home Theater Workshop. Sweat Equity shows you how to improve your home and improve your life. New projects show how a little money and a little sweat. Hi, welcome back to DIY's Home Theater Workshop. I'm Corey Greenberg. So far, we've done the design and layout of our home theater. We've decided where the chair is going to go, the big screen, as well as the projector. Now it's time to decide where we're going to place our surround sound speakers. But first, some basics about how sound works. Sound can only do three things in a room. Reflect and stay inside the room, absorb into the walls, and transmit into areas outside the room. Since our goal is to keep sound inside the room and avoid bothering people in other parts of the house, it's important to have some reflection and absorption, and we'll try to reduce the amount of transmission. To get the most out of your surround sound system, it's important to place your speakers in the best sounding locations. Just like determining the seating position, speakers will follow the same guidelines, and that's where we take the room dimensions and divide it into thirds and try to locate the speakers in those places. Thirds is typically the best location for sound, but if your screen is so large it means placing your speakers too far out into the room, you can also get good sound with your speakers on the fifth and seventh dimensions of the room. We have to figure out where to place our 5.1 surround sound speakers, which include a center channel, front left and right speakers, two surrounds, and in this case, two subwoofers. Mark, let's talk about speaker placement. Center channel speaker is the most important speaker in the surround system. Most of the dialogue and effects are coming from the center speaker. So what's the best place to put the center speaker? Well, of course, we like to have the center speaker at the front of the room, preferably behind the screen. Now, in this case, we have a non-perforated screen, so we choose a location either below or above the screen. We chose the location above the screen to get the best sound to the most people in the room. Okay, now we're on to surround speakers. There's two types of surround speakers. Direct radiator, which is like the standard type of speaker you have in the front, and then dipole surround, which shoots the sound forward and backward for a more enveloping effect. Now, people like me who listen to a lot of music on the system tend to go for the direct radiators, but Peter's actually chosen the dipole radiator because he's going to watch a lot of movies. So what's the best position for both those kind of surround speakers? Well, direct radiating lounge speakers are best located in the back corners of the room. The general rule of thumb is about 120 degrees the space apart from behind the listener's head. The dipole surround speakers create a very diffuse sound field, and they're designed to be located on the side walls of your home theater, just about directly beside your seating location. So for dipoles, you want them to be right to the side. Direct radiators can be behind the listener. For the dipole speakers, the best location is on the side of the wall, enveloping your listeners in sound. Now we're Sorry about that, I had to cut the uh, video short. It's a little bit too long for YouTube, so stay tuned for part three of the DMY DIY video. Home theater, thank you.